Hi guys, Patrick here. As promised, today's video will be the top 15 completed fantasy series that I've ever read so far. Doing this video actually was more difficult than I thought it would be. I mean, uh, recording and editing the video are difficult already, but even sorting out the ranking actually took me days for me to actually feel right about it. But yeah, I think I'm comfortable with the order of the ranking now. And so far in my reading journey, I have finished reading 53 completed fantasy series. And this number doesn't include completed fantasy series that I've started but not yet finished. For example, like uh, The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. I have started the series and I haven't continued past the fourth book even though the series is finished. Out of 53 completed fantasy series that I've finished, uh, these are my top 15. And please remember that although there's a ranking to this list, I highly, highly recommend you to check out every single series that I mentioned. Alright, let's start at number 15. We have the Ryria Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan. This is a six book series divided into three omnibus. The first omnibus is Death of Swords, the second omnibus is Rise of Empire, and the third omnibus is Heir of Novron. It's pretty much an undisputed opinion now by the readers of the series that the one of the best thing about Ryria Revelations is that it is a series that keeps on getting better with each new volume. As I've mentioned before, I didn't click with Death of Swords. I didn't expect that this series would become one of my favorites, but it did. The last two books, which is The Last Omnibus, is still one of my favorite books that I've ever read so far. If you have heard about this series before, you probably know already that Royce and Hadrian are beloved characters. They are one of the best bromance in fantasy. The set characters were also incredibly well written and Arista and Modina are still some of the best female characters that I've ever read in fantasy. Even though it's been almost 4 years since I've read the Ryria Revelations, it is that good. And of course, not only there is a noticeable steady rise in quality with each book, the Ryria Revelations eventually reaches one of the best and most satisfying conclusion in fantasy that I've ever read. Next on the list we have Book of the Ancestor by Mark Lawrence. The first book is Red Sister, the second book is Grey Sister, and the third book is Holy Sister. Coming of Age Fantasy and Battle School is one of my favorite tropes in fantasy. I simply cannot get enough of reading about them. And Book of the Ancestor trilogy features these tropes incredibly well. And it is interesting because Book of the Ancestor actually are so different than the previous series by Mark Lawrence before Book of the Ancestor. Uh, Broken Empire Trilogy and Red Queen's War Trilogy. Broken Empire Trilogy and the Red Queen's War Trilogy featured uh, main characters that either morally grey or just downright villainous. That goes for Jork from Broken Empire Trilogy. But that's not the case with Nona. Nona Grey, the main character in the Book of the Ancestor Trilogy, is a genuinely kind-hearted character. And I love reading about Nona and the friendship she made with her friends. It is a very well written book, the world building is unique, and the characters are very easy to care for. I highly highly recommend this one. And the next series on this list is kinda interchangeable with Book of the Ancestor. It is Never Night by J. Christoph. The first book is Never Night, the second book is God's Grave, and the third book is Dark Dawn. In a similar way to the Book of the Ancestor trilogy, the main character in Never Night is a young female character training in an assassin school. So yeah, this is another coming of age fantasy, but similarity in premise with the Book of the Ancestors side. Nothing else are actually similar. I really thought that I was going to hate this trilogy, but wow, I was clearly so wrong. I think if you love Book of the Ancestor trilogy, there is a very very good chance that you will also love this one. Plus the cover art and the design for this trilogy is bloody beautiful, both US and UK edition. Just amazing. At number 12 on my list, is the Wounded Kingdom trilogy by R.J. Barker. The first book is Age of Assassins, the second book is Blood of Assassins, and the third book is King of Assassins. This is an incredibly underrated trilogy. Again, this is another coming of age fantasy, but this one doesn't feature a battle school. And the best comparison I can think of for this one is that uh, if you love Assassin's Apprentice, I think there's a good chance that you will love this one. I love The Wounded Kingdom. I think it's crazy that a lot of people haven't tried this series yet. I think Barker did something truly incredible with his character. Girton's character development felt organic and even though there were times where he was, wow, so infuriating. I mean, uh, this was especially true in Blood of Assassins. I mean, come on, even the author admits it that he wanted to slap Girton. But even though he's infuriating sometimes, I do think that his story always makes me want to continue. I always want to find out more. Barker's story combines mystery and fantasy amazingly well. 
And again, the Wounded Kingdom trilogy is one of those series that constantly gets better with each book. King of Assassins ended the series magnificently. Pretty much everyone who have read the series agreed that the third book is the best. At the number 11 spot is Paternos trilogy by Dirk Ashton. The first book is Paternos Rise of Gods, the second book is Paternos Wrath of Gods, and the third book is Paternos War of Gods. For the past few years, I've heard that a lot of people found their love to reading urban fantasy from reading uh, The Dresden Files by Jay Butcher. That is not the case with me. It was Paternos trilogy that really got me into reading urban fantasy because I think uh, Dirk Ashton did something truly incredible with the genre. He truly combines urban fantasy with contemporary setting, with epic fantasy through the smart usage of uh, mythologies. Wow, I mean seriously, I don't want uh, I don't want to spoil you, but if you really love urban fantasy, epic fantasy, and mythologies, you really, really have to give this series a try. And I'm not kidding, the, the last book gets so epic, it is one of the most epic book that I've ever read. It actually included hundreds of thousands of gods, monsters, valkyries, giants, and, and all kind of creatures battling. It was that epic and the ending was so powerful. Highly, highly recommended. One of the best self-published fantasy series that I've ever read. At number 10, we have the Winnowing Flame trilogy by Jan Williams. The first book is the Nint Rain, the second book is the Bitter Twins, and the third book is the Poison Song. This is probably one of the most underrated trilogy that I've ever seen. It's so damn good that it actually shocked me that not, not too many people have talked about this yet. The main characters, especially the main trio, Vintage, Noon, and Thor, are truly memorable characters that I love since the first book. And this is one of those series that is kind of hard to define because it kind of blends fantasy, sci-fi, and horror together into one. And the result is brilliant. Plus, uh, if you love animal companions in fantasy, I'm going to assume you do. Uh, you have something even better waiting for you here. A war beast. A lot of them. Just look at the cover. Just look at the cover art. There's a griffon, there's a flying tiger, there's a dragon. And with warriors riding them into battle, you can expect insane aerial battles. And my god, Jen Williams delivered. At number 9, we have the Poppy War trilogy by R.F. Kuang. Uh, the first book is The Poppy War, the second book is The Dragon Republic, and the third book is The Burning God. Uh, I'm <laughs> for this one, I'm kind of cheating because the third book uh, hasn't come out yet. It comes out next month, but yeah, I've read this one and I thoroughly uh, love this trilogy. It is one of the best trilogy that I've ever read. It is a brutal war story and I love that Kuang's writing constantly gets better with each book. Seriously, her, her writing in The Burning God truly signaled uh, great things to come in her future novels. At the number 8 spot uh, is Divine Cities Trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett. The first book is City of Stairs, the second book is City of Blades, and the third book is City of Miracles. This is an amazing urban high fantasy trilogy. Uh, it's, a, it's an urban fantasy that takes place in a fictional world. I love this kind of urban fantasy. If you have recommendations, please let me know. Anyway, back to the series. This is a standalone trilogy. Each book features a self-contained story with different main characters in a different setting. And this trilogy is just purely stunning, especially the first book and the third book. I love those two books so much. I also love the second book, City of Blades, but yeah, my favorites were definitely the first book and the third book. Also, there is something that I realized from reading this trilogy. Uh, the fantasy genre doesn't feature a lot of uh, older individuals as the main characters, but that's not the case here. Although each book featured the different main characters, but all three of them are adults. And that's something kind of refreshing in my opinion. And honestly, Secret is one of my favorite characters in fantasy. And again, the ending of this trilogy is amazing. So come to think of it, I really should reread this trilogy one day. <laughs> At the number 7 spot is Ash and Sand trilogy by Richard Nell. Uh, the first book is Kings of Paradise, the second book is Kings of Ash, and the third book is Kings of Heaven. The series just concluded recently, and this is a grimdark fantasy featuring one of the most well-written anti-hero that I've ever read in any fiction. Ruka, son of Bela, is an amazing character. He's at least as well written as Logan Nine Fingers from the First Law trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Yeah, he is that good, and I love his character that much. Even though he did a lot of bad things, but I just couldn't turn away. His personality and characterizations were so well written that I that I understood what he's going through and why he decided to do all of those actions. The magic system is intriguing, and the world building was unique. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Ash and Sand trilogy is actually the first trilogy that I know that utilize uh, Indonesian words into its world building. 
I'm located in Indonesia by the way and there is a group of rich people in this series and they're called uh, Orang Kaya. Orang Kaya in Indonesia literally means rich person and I think that's something really cool. I've never seen that before in uh, the fantasy books that I'm reading. And I'll be honest, although I haven't made this list, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert that SNS Trilogy is currently my number one best self-published fantasy that I've ever read. Yes, at number one spot for series, okay? And speaking of grimdark fantasy, at the number six spot is the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. The first book is The Blade itself, the second book is Before They Are Hanged, and the third book is Last Argument of Kings. There are many good reasons why he is uh, called the Lord of Grimdark now in modern fantasy. No one writes characters in the grimdark genre like Joe Abercrombie. He is so bloody good and even in this trilogy alone, and there is still more, uh, there is still more beyond this trilogy, but I'm going to focus on this trilogy alone, Logan Nine Fingers, Glockta, and Jezal, especially Logan and Glockta, are some of the most memorable and distinctive characters in the entire fantasy genre that I've ever read so far. There is something about Abercrombie's writing and characterization that's so recognizable that even if there is no names mentioned, you will still know who's talking. That's always a good sign in my opinion. Not many authors can do that, and Abercrombie can do that easily for many characters. Say one thing about Joe Abercrombie says that he writes some of the best grimdark stories in the entire genre. I think the entire First Law series, not just this trilogy, is in fact my favorite grimdark series at number one spot. And one more thing, Abercrombie's uh, action sequences are exemplary. There is a very cinematic and vivid quality to them that always made me feel like I was uh, in the battles together with the characters. And you can, you can probably imagine how intense that felt. The calamity and the destruction witnessed in this trilogy alone is so crazy already. If you love grimdark fantasy, this is pretty much the highest recommendation I can give you. And we have reached the number 5 spot, it is the Lycanius trilogy by James Eilington. The first book is The Shadow of What Was Lost, the second book is An Echo of Things to Come, and the third book is The Light of All That Falls. The Lycanius trilogy is a type of stories that only a planner can write. I wish I can elaborate more on that, but I'm very limited in what I can say here because there is so many things in the trilogy that can be considered spoilers. All three books in this trilogy are in my favorite shelves. If you're reading this trilogy for the first time, I strongly recommend you to binge read it. I put The Shadow of What Was Lost, the first book, in, the, in my best fantasy for newcomer to adult fantasy video, and I stay true to that. But as I mentioned, the second book and the third book uh, the complexities and the intricacies improve significantly and because of that I think it is quite mandatory for you to binge read this trilogy together. I've seen several reviews that mention that when they're reading the third book they felt like they've they felt like they've forgotten a lot of details and even though there's a very detailed summary in the beginning of each book I can definitely understood why they felt that way. I will too but thankfully I binge read this trilogy non-stop. I very much love this trilogy. If you have seen my reviews on Goodreads or Novel Notions, you know just how much I love this series. Eilington has mentioned that uh, he started writing the Lycanius trilogy after he finished reading the Kingkiller Chronicles, the available ones anyway, by Patrick Rothfuss and Miss Bond trilogy by Brendan Sanderson and it shows so much in his writing. The way he plots the entire series and foreshadows everything from the first book is very reminiscent of Miss Bourne trilogy. I just love the Lycanius trilogy, please please give this a go. And speaking of Miss Bourne, at the number 4 spot is indeed Miss Bourne trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. The first book is The Final Empire, the second book is The Well of Ascension, and the third book is The Hero of Ages. Look, as I just mentioned, uh, the plotting of this trilogy is incredible and this is not even Sanderson's best work. In my opinion, Sanderson's best work is still the Stormlight Archives. It is not on this list because it is still ongoing. However, I do have a huge bias towards Miss trilogy. Look, uh, a lot of people have mentioned the Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter as their gateway to fantasy. That is not the case with me. Miss Bond trilogy is my gateway into reading fantasy novels. I have always been a fantasy reader, but not for novels. I read manga since I was a child, but reading adult fantasy, I've only been doing it for four years. But this is what made the Miss Bond trilogy the most important series for me. Without reading this trilogy, you probably won't be watching this video right now. You probably won't be seeing me writing uh, those hundreds of reviews that I've done. It is an amazing trilogy with the best magic system that I've ever read so far. Even though I've read almost 500 novels, I still think that Alamancy is the, still the best and the most well-written uh, magic system. 
The plotting in this trilogy is incredible, the world building felt atmospheric, and the characters are so memorable to me. Vin, Kelsier, Seizet, Spook, uh, Elon, uh, Tensun, and so many more characters are characters that I will always remember. I remember back when I first finished Hero of Ages for the first time, I actually just sit and stare at the wall. Like, wow, what did I just read? That was mind-blowing. And that's when I realized that, wow, I can love reading adult fantasy. And now we have arrived at my top 3 completed fantasy series of all time. And honestly speaking, the top 3 here are very interchangeable depending on my reading mood. So just consider these 3 at the number 1 spot. First, we have The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hood. This is the definition of what I would say character-driven fantasy at its best. It is a gigantic series, more than 4 million words, divided into 5 sub-series. The first being Farship Trilogy, the second the Lifeship Traders Trilogy, the third the Tawny Man Trilogy, the fourth series is the Rainwild Chronicles, and finally the Fits and the Fool Trilogy. This is one of my most treasured series of all time. I love this series so much and I think I will love this even more on reread. And again, this can also be considered a coming of age fantasy because we see Fitz, the main character from uh, he was uh, a boy until he was old in the Fitz and the Full trilogy. In the entire 16 books, there aren't too many battle scenes, so if you come into this series expecting that, you probably will have a bad time. This doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of intense moments because wow, there is a lot. And there are two things that uh, Fans of the series, myself included, can definitely agree with. First, Hobbes' writings is one of the best in the genre. It's beautiful, lyrical. I can just read her writing forever. <laughs> and the second thing, it is heartbreaking. That's all I'm gonna say on this one. Hobbes is so merciless towards her characters, all of them. Sometimes when I'm reading, I actually felt, oh, come on, give this guy a break already. <laughs> I have actually written more than 10,000 words of reviews for the entire series, so. Yeah, I don't have much else to say except that, once again, this is character-driven epic fantasy at its best, and I totally recommend it. The next series in my top 3 is Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. You might have heard about this series, and if you have heard about this series and haven't started it, you probably have found yourself intimidated by it. And I, totally, and I totally understand that. It is a huge commitment. It is the most complex epic fantasy that I've ever read so far. And the world building is so massive. I'm not joking. Uh, by the entire 10 books actually have more than a thousand different names for you to remember. In my opinion, Steven Erickson is a blessing for the genre. And I am truly grateful that I gave this series a try. Believe me, I was intimidated too. It is a 10 thick book series with more than 3 million words. And this series has become so large that even if Erickson wants to write in this, uh, in this world forever, it could still work. It is that huge and the potential is unlimited. Now here's the thing, personally speaking, I think no matter how many reviews you've read, the best way to know whether this series will work for you or not is to just give it a go. Seriously, just give it a try. And my recommendation is this, uh, try this series until the third book. Uh, Memories of Vice. This is always my go-to recommendation. If you have finished Memories of Vice and still find yourself so disconnected and not enjoying the series, just give up the series. It's totally okay if it's not for you. Memories of Vice is considered by many fans of the series, myself included, to be one of, if not the best books in the entire series. And personally speaking, my favorite books in the entire Malazan Book of the Fallen is Memories of Vice, The Bone Hunters, and The Crippled God. These three, I would give them 6 out of 5 stars if I could. They are masterpieces, and really, Malazan Book of the Fallen, in my opinion, is one of the most epic fantasy experience you could ever uh, experience from reading. Finally, we have arrived at the last series on this list. It is The Banished Land Saga by John Gwynn. Uh, the Banished Land Saga consists of two series. They are The Faithful and the Fallen Quartet, and of Blood and Bone Trilogy. If you know me from the reading community, then you'll know that I'm pretty much a walking billboard for John Gwynn. The Banished Land Saga is pretty much everything I'm looking for in an epic fantasy. It is very easy to recognize that Gwynn writes amazing battles in, oh yes, he does. Yeah, in my opinion, he's the best close quarter combat writer in the entire fantasy that I've ever read so far. But at the end of the day, what makes his action sequence work so damn well is that his characterizations are superlative. His characterizations for so many characters through the seven books are excellent. Just excellent. Korban, Gar, Makin, Kaiwen, uh, Storm, 
Veradis, Castel, Dram, even the villain Lycos, uh, Jael, these characters, all of them felt so real to me. No, I'm not kidding. They, they have become real to me now. And Gwyn is very brutal towards his characters. Uh, he kills off many characters. I love authors that are willing to kill, the, kill off their characters. And I do realize that this isn't a storytelling decision that can be taken uh, or executed easily. Because if an author wants to kill off their characters, they have to make sure that they have enough other characters for us to care for. But there is a huge benefit that comes from killing off characters. It raises the stakes and intensity so much. And that's one of the reasons why the battles in this series are so intense. Because no one is safe. And Gwyn has successfully made his readers especially me, invested in all of his characters. And the war scene, especially the final battle in Wrath and A Time of Courage, is oh my god, so epic and magnificently written. When I finished reading Wrath for the first time, I had a book hangover. Then when I finished A Time of Courage for the first time uh, this year, again, I had a book hangover. And right now, as I'm recording this, A Time of Courage is still my number one book of the year. Uh, we'll just have to see whether Rhythm of War can top that. And I do honestly believe that this is epic fantasy at its best for me. John Wynne is one of the most underrated authors, and I truly, truly have faith that he will become so famous in the future. Jump into this series now, join the Gwyn's war band now. Well, that's it for today's video. Uh, although these are 15 completed fantasy series, that's actually 72 novels included. This should be enough to increase your TBR. There are still a lot of completed fantasy series that I haven't finished reading yet. So there is a chance that uh, this list might change in the future. I'm thinking of doing this video annually, but if there isn't a lot of changes uh, next year, I think I will do this video again in 2022. I usually read around 100 books, so if there is a lot of changes by next year, I will do this video again next year. Next month, I will probably feature my favorite ongoing fantasy series, which I know will be even more difficult to do but I will do my best. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and I really, really hope that this video will increase your TBR a lot. And as a reminder, I have written a full spoiler-free review for all the books mentioned on this video. You can read them on Goodreads. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for all your support. Uh, especially to my Patreons, you have my gratitude always. Bye.